Ego is the what is this mind of ego calls ego itself on occasions is the scrapping mind. I don't mean it always ends up in a boxing match or scrapping with fists and cuffs. It's always interested in the scraps rather than the big fish. Always interested in the sardines rather than the the the, the whale. There's a great a great scene in the film Braveheart. And if you dis disassociate from the England Scotland feud <laughs> that was apparently going on in the film, there was much prophecies and meanings and parables within the, the script writing. And there's a scene when William Wallace is trying to get ego or trying to get all the other lords of Scotland to congregate and become one really strong um, mind. One strong empire. And they start, he, he has this big speech and they start feuding. And he walks away, he says, you're always interested in the scraps. You're always interested in your own little empires. He uses the word freedom. But again, if you disassociate with the word freedom, he's moving on to, into something much more grander. He wants something much more grander than the scraps of land and titles. That's what ego is. I heard a great story years from, from some saint many years ago and, and, and another uh, a much more poetic way, but the way I put it is this saint had discovered something truly, truly magnificent. And let's, for putting it into a, a kind of story context, let's say this thing was God. He actually discovered God. And he met uh, these two opposing friends of his, one left, one right, say. And he said to them, stop, stop your arguments, your feuds for one moment and look there, I want to show you God. If you come over here, I want to show you God. And they both stop for a minute and one says, ha, I haven't got time for that. Yeah, I'm trying to sort out the world here. I'm trying to sort out, I'm trying to tell my friend how this is, this is going to be done. And he's trying to tell me, well, tell him, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that it's impossible. And the, 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 the saint of this enlightened being says, in what context are you trying to um, sort out the world. Yeah. I want to be more compassionate. I want to give the people more money and all this stuff. And the other one says, I want to take all things away and let people be simple and basic in life. And the saint says, yeah, that's very good, very good. You're interested in the world, both of you, in both ways, in great ways, for the mind. But what about yourselves? 
What do you mean? It's our job, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, but what about yourself? When was the last time that you sat down for a proper meal and and and, and said grace and, and oh we haven't got time for that. We have to sort out the world. So you're not concerned about yourself. Of course we are concerned. We are doing stuff. That's what we are here for. We're doing stuff, yeah. Okay, so for one moment, can I ask you why you're doing all this stuff? That's what we're supposed to do, that's what God wants. Okay then, so let's go ask God. Let's go get some confirmation. Come with me. <laughs> we haven't got time for that. So you're not interested in your own discoveries about yourself. You're not interested in your relationship with God. <laughs> God does, you know, God um, may exist, may not exist, it matters not. We have to keep trying, keep moving, keep improving, keep getting the world together. And the same says, yeah, keep suffering. Your only attention is on the scraps of others. Your only attention is for some sort of ultimatum. Whether it's a good ultimatum or a bad ultimatum, your only attention is on that. What God sees nothing of no relationship to. Or how do you know? Because God is pure. God has spoken. Well, go ask your God who is right here. So this, the, the saint says, yeah, okay. So the next day he comes back and they're still in the same position, still feuding, still grabbing a sandwich, still driving to work 100 miles an hour all over the country. And he comes back and he says, I asked my God, who is right? And they said, they stopped for a moment. Well, you're both right. You're both equally right. And you'll both continue to be equally right. And you'll both continue with this scrapping and this ego world. But God says, one day you will stop and you will come forth to meet. But only in your time. And they continue scrapping. Now, there are much, the reason for this talk is there are much on YouTube and all over discussion about this new awakening and how we're all waiting, or everyone is waiting for this new arising, this new discovery, this new change in a world that is dominated by, by fear and suffering. At the same time, most are scrapping. Most have their eyes on the scrapping, thinking, when it happens, I hope I'm going to be there. I'm going to do good things in the world to make sure that this, whatever it is, discovers me and doesn't leave me behind. Well, you know what? Most saints, most enlightened beings that have the have no fear to come forth and talk openly. If you look at the record, if you look at their statements, if you look at where they are, what they do, they didn't sit and scrap and wait. They actually seeked. And they seeked without scrapping and waiting. They left ego behind. They didn't associate with ego for one moment. They didn't associate with identities and titles and land and material things. And they didn't associate with their mind. They didn't associate with any thought that took their attention off of this meeting. So you go and you wait. Because only a few escape. It's not a special title. It's not a special thing because those who are awakened and like know that they have much much more to do than those scrapping about a world that is changing and impoverishing 
and growing and expanding and decreasing and in nature looking after itself. It's a fear. It's, it's an in, being unprepared. It's not a fear. It's being unprepared and unready for that meeting. And it's okay, you know. It's okay to scrap. In the Braveheart movie, war has a tearful end, same as Christ. Because he tried, like Christ, to change ego. Ego is a natural thing. Each one of us have it. Each one of us will lose it. Each one of us will gain it again. Each one of us will continue to be a number. Each one of us will continue on our journey to meet God. And you know what? When you meet God, you take two steps forward, God takes two steps back. And the minute you give up, you start again. Back for more scrapping. That's how much work you have. These are steps. These are giant steps back. So you have no time to watch all the scrapping on television and all conspiracies and all um, debates on vaccines and and, and viruses and whatever, you know, let it be. These are ego scraps, wanting to do good for the world, wanting to good, do good, wanting to do bad, wanting to prepare, wanting to organize, wanting to improve. All good things, as God says, all doing it right. But at some point, there has to be a white flag, a truce. I give up. I'm going to have something more important to do now. Something is calling me inside. More sense and gurus will tell you that the experience wasn't just a strike of lightning because they were lucky. There was something happening in their life that was changing. Something happening that was saying, in one moment, I'm going to call you. Be prepared. Be ready. And then there is this type of freedom. <laughs> but it's not like the movies, you know. The scrapping is the movie. The story behind the movie is the movie. The truth, when the movie is seen through, meaning seen as a fraud, seen as just a time lapse so that you can prepare, like you get ready for a wedding. You know, the wedding is in four hours. You start preparing four hours, makeup on, hair done, suit to the dry cleaners, iron shirt, jewelry on, all this stuff. That's this world of scrappy, trying to prepare yourself for that. That unbelievable moment. So ego is valuable. Ego is truly valuable. Scrapping is valuable. Doing things for the world is valuable. But it's all about the world and not about you at that moment. When you turn your head around to you and look within you, God will only reveal itself through you and not through the world of scraps. <laughs>